Hello, my name is Jennifer Kern Schliva, and I am a co author of the manuscript entitled Paliperidone Palmitate versus Risperidone Long Acting Injectable in Subjects with Schizophrenia, recently treated with oral risperidone or other oral antipsychotics. Schizophrenia affects just over 1% of the adult population, with an estimated 51 million sufferers worldwide. Although symptoms can be treated effectively with antipsychotic medication, poor adherence to prescribed treatment is a well-recognized problem. Poor adherence is associated with clinical and functional deterioration and increased risks for relapse, rehospitalization, and suicidal behavior. Simplified antipsychotic medication regimens, such as long-acting injectable formulations, may be helpful in improving adherence. Patients given oral once daily dosing must remember to take their medication 365 times a year. With a long acting injectable formulation, this is reduced to 26 times yearly for biweekly dosing and 12 times yearly for monthly dosing. Also, with long acting injectable antipsychotics, Healthcare providers can be certain of their patient's adherence and resources are not wasted on discarded or forgotten medication. It is unclear whether certain subpopulations within the schizophrenia spectrum would be likely to benefit from these potential advantages. In particular, because of the similarity between the molecules, one might question whether persons who have failed treatment with oral risperidone will show a good clinical response to long-acting paliperidone palmitate or long-acting risperidone. In this article, we describe a post-hoc subgroup analysis of a 13-week randomized double-blind trial undertaken to address this question. The original trial evaluated response to treatment with long-acting injectable paliperidone palmitate or long-acting injectable risperidone in subjects with schizophrenia who were experiencing clinically significant symptoms despite recent treatment with oral antipsychotics. Efficacy was measured by noting improvement in PANS total score, PANS factor scores, and CGI severity scale score. A total of 747 subjects from the original study were included in this subgroup analysis. During the two weeks before the start of the double-blind study medication, 233 subjects had received oral risperidone, 402 had received another oral antipsychotic, and 112 had not received any antipsychotic medication. At the end of 13 weeks of treatment, statistically significant improvements from baseline to endpoint were seen in all efficacy measures within each group for both paliperidone palmitate and risperidone long-acting injection, regardless of previous oral antipsychotic treatment. You can see from the highlighted data that a change from baseline for all parameters appeared similar across groups. The responses were statistically significant and all comparisons within each group had a p-value less than or equal to 0.0002. Similarly, functioning improved significantly for subjects within each group for both paliperidone palmitate and the risperidone long-acting injection. Personal and Social Performance Scale, or PSP, scores significantly improved from baseline to endpoint among all previous treatment subgroups. This figure shows that the distribution of categorical PSP scale scores improved across all groups from baseline to endpoint. From 52 to 61 percent of subjects across the subgroups analyzed experienced one or more treatment immersion adverse event. Common adverse events for paliperidone palmitate subjects were insomnia, 7.1 to 12.6 percent, headache, 6.3 to 9 percent, and injection site pain, 3 to 10.7 percent, irrespective of prior oral risperidone status. Common adverse events for all risperidone long-acting injection subjects were insomnia, 5.6 to 8.4%, and headache, 5.4 to 9.4%. In summary, 
our analysis suggests that treatment with paliperidone palmitate or risperidone long-acting injection can be effective in patients regardless of previous oral antipsychotic treatment. For patients who had previously received oral risperidone only, the difference in the formulation was the main change in the intervention as the molecules delivered remained the same or similar. These data support the contribution of a long-acting formulation to improving treatment response and suggest that non-adherence may be a significant contributor to an inadequate efficacy of oral formulations in patients with schizophrenia. Thank you for your interest, and we hope that you have found our analysis useful in the management of your patients who are receiving antipsychotic agents.